According to the artistrow.net, from dancing, vibrating, light-filled passages to richly colored transparent darks, from cascading wet washes to staccato dry brush effects, watercolors can produce painting effects which no other medium can match. It is the permanence, the transparency, and the staining of watercolor that allows this medium to stand alone and makes it a unique form of expression in art. It is for these reasons that I've chosen to teach you how to paint using watercolors. Today I would like to teach you the process of painting a watercolor piece. In order to do so, I will first explain the history of watercolor, its importance, and how it affects the practice of watercolor painting. Second, I will discuss what is needed in order to create a watercolor painting, and how each element works together to create your artwork. Third, I will perform a demonstration on how to paint using the medium of watercolor. Finally, I will reveal what the future will mean for watercolor and how adaptations of this medium have been made to this two-dimensional art form with technological advancements. Watercolor painting is a process of painting with pigments that are mixed with water. Of all the painting processes, it is known for its delicacy and subtlety because watercolor is all about thin washes and the transparency of its colors. According to the New World Encyclopedia.org, watercolor is a tradition that dates back to primitive man, using pigments mixed with water to create cave paintings by applying the paint with fingers, sticks, and bones. Ancient Egyptians used water-based paints in order to decorate their tombs and created some of the first watercolor pieces on papyrus paper. It was in the Far East and the Middle East that the first watercolor schools or predominant styles emerged in the modern sense. In America, the earliest watercolor paintings were produced to create a factual documentation of the New World. In the 1560s, European explorers carried this visual information, considered maps, back to the Old World. Watercolor remained a significant art process throughout history. Michelangelo painted a fictive architectural molding down the length of the Sistine Chapel using watercolor as one of his primary mediums. It wasn't until the 1940s that watercolor as an art medium became less of a primary medium in art. According to BigCityArt.com, the development of abstract expressionism in New York caused watercolor to lose a certain amount of its popularity as it was not a medium which played a role in the evolution of the new movement in abstraction. Watercolors are small and intimate in scale and were subordinate to the huge canvases of abstract expressionists. Traditional Western watercolor painting was slow in evolving because watercolor paper was considered a luxury item during the early stages of the practice's evolution. According to metmuseum.org, beginning in the 1830s, artists could buy moist watercolors in porcelain pans, and even greater advance arrived in 1846 when Windsor and Newton introduced moist watercolors in metal tubes. I've just discussed the history of watercolor and the development of each of the elements to use in creating a watercolor painting. Next, I will explain what tools you need in order to watercolor, describe the process of watercolor painting, and explain techniques you may want to consider to create different effects. There are many ways to approach watercolor painting. According to the New York Times article, The Importance of Watercolor, a watercolorist walks a tightrope of risk, unlike the practitioner of any other medium. It is a direct and difficult medium. The effects are often created with lightning speed and they cannot be reversed or duplicated. In order to paint using watercolor, you need a glass of water, watercolor paints, either in the form of a watercolor pan, tube watercolor, or watercolor pencils, and paintbrushes. Personally, I also like to have a towel next to me when I'm painting in order to clean my brushes in between strokes, which prevents colors from bleeding into each other or appearing muddy. Also using a towel allows you to practice a dry brush technique. According to artistsandillustrators.co.uk, if one considers the surface of watercolor paper as a series of peaks and valleys, the aim of the dry brush stroke is to apply color to the peaks and not flood the valleys with wash. According to paintingwithwatercolors.com, by considering watercolor painting as dealing with colored water, you are forced to give more thought to the water component. Water is the most important ingredient in watercolor painting, but it is rarely given much attention. It is the water that allows watercolor paint to do its magic. Furthermore, watercolor painting techniques like washes, working in wet and wet and wet on dry, lifting out for highlights, and many other techniques allows you to achieve various textural effects. A successful watercolor artist is able to recognize the balance between control and freedom in their work, using these watercolor painting techniques to create visual effects that often occur by accident rather than on purpose. Dip your paintbrush into water. In this step, it's important to consider how wet you want your bristles to be on your brush as it determines the transparency or opacity of the color you're painting with. You can see here, I went with a darker opacity, which means that I used more pigment than I did water in order to create this darker blue tone. 
By dipping your paintbrush into the watercolor pan, you decide how much paint you would like to pack onto your paintbrush. With more water, you're able to achieve more fluid paint strokes, but it's less controllable and more mutable. With less water and more paint, you're adding higher amounts of pigment onto the paper. Here, I used more water and less pigment to create a gradient effect At this point in my painting process, I noticed I used a little bit too much pigment in an area I wanted to highlight. So I used this blotting technique in order to create the highlight that was desired. Choosing the type of brush is also important in creating your artwork. I used a finer tip brush in order to go in and create more of a gradient effect with added detail and be more precise in the application process. Once the paint has completely dried, you'll see that it has changed. It's normal for colors to appear less vibrant once they've dried. Interesting textures also appear. According to artsy.net, this is the beautiful aspect of watercolor. It dries in mysterious ways. I've just discussed what you need in order to create a watercolor painting, describe the steps of watercolor painting, and explain the techniques that can be used to create different visual effects and textures. Finally, I will discuss the future of watercolor painting and how it has evolved today. The future of watercolor has greatly changed. With technology, watercolor has been replicated to become a more precise art form, and it's become less about a practice which is equally dependent on the use of technique and spontaneity. According to SmashingMagazine.com, watercolor paintings are considered a unique way to creatively represent dreams, illusions, emotions, and bright feelings using water-soluble pigments. The craft of watercolor teaches you to consider both light and tone and understand how each movement of your hand affects a piece in a unique way. The most notable long-term changes in the watercolor art form are the advancements of computer programs such as Photoshop, Illustrator, and finally Procreate, which all include pre-programmed brush options that mimic a watercolor brushstroke effect in which you can control the opacity of the colors. According to designcuts.com, the right brushes will allow you to transform your tablet into a canvas and create effortless designs that look and both feel natural. Today I taught you how to watercolor. In order to do so, I first explained what the watercolor practice is, its history, and secondly, I discussed how it works and performed a demonstration. Finally, revealed what the future will mean for the watercolor art form. As an unpredictable medium, the character of watercolor is uniquely challenging. You must learn to take advantage of the unexpected results of the medium. In watercolor, spontaneity is everything. The artist learns to improvise, which can only be done effectively with experience. Unlike any other medium, I believe watercolor as an art practice is the most honest. Through the lack of complete control that the artist has in this medium, improvisation seems to record the artist's fleeting thought onto the paper, and emotion is naturally being reflected onto the surface of the painting.